Well, good afternoon. It's good to see you today. Are you all happy today? Are you all smart today? Yes. Wise? Well, wisdom is what I would like to speak to you about. Back in May, it was my privilege to go to Turkey. And on this trip, I was going to a conference that was working with refugees. Christian work with refugees. In many cases, business as mission or helping the poor. There were different mission groups there doing all of this. On this trip, we went to Ephesus. Ephesus is a famous place in the biblical world, as you know, and you have studied or will study the book of Ephesians, written to the saints at Ephesus. Saints at Ephesus were exposed to wisdom. Wisdom as it was defined by the Greeks. And of course, the Greeks are known for wisdom, and it was in that context that Greek philosophy flourished and spoke directly about the matter of the relationship between wisdom and knowledge. And the Greeks thought that the more you knew, the more probable that you would be wise. And so they put themselves in pursuit of knowledge. Now the word in the Greek for knowledge has several different forms. If you study Greek, you'll come to understand that. In one case, the word gnosis means knowledge, and in Greek philosophy, they figured we never would know everything. Now, you have come here to learn as much as you can, but you would agree, probably, that you will never know everything. But the Greek pursuit was to know as much of everything as they could. This particular word was the word in the Greek, gnosis. From that word comes the word agnostic. Have you heard that word? An agnostic is one who says there's more knowledge than I can receive. And so the word gnosis created a philosophy that came from the Greeks in which they pursued knowledge but never believed they could have full knowledge. Now alongside of the Greek pursuit of knowledge was a belief that the more knowledge you had, the wiser you would be. But there was another word for knowledge that took it a step higher. And this is the biblical word, in fact, that is used in Paul's letter to the Ephesians when he talks about epignosis. Epignosis. Gnosis, incomplete knowledge. Epignosis, complete knowledge. Complete knowledge is what I want to talk to you about because, believe it or not, at Olivet University, that's what we're about. Oh, don't misunderstand. I don't mean that we will know every fact about everything that you will study, nor that we will exhaust what there is to know even about God or about the Bible. But we will approach epignosis, which is what is the highest form of knowledge. The highest form of knowledge 
comes close to what we learn in the Old Testament to be wisdom. You see, wisdom takes knowledge and adds to it decisions that are the right ones. So it's not just the intellect, what you know, but it's the choices you make. And in the scriptures, what the Apostle Paul said was that in him, Jesus Christ, is full knowledge, epignosis. So when I say Olivet University is about full knowledge, what I'm saying is it's about full epignosis, knowledge of him. Sometimes you can take the scriptures and study just that phrase, knowledge of him. To know Christ is to have wisdom, the highest form of knowledge, which brings truth together based upon fact, knowledge, with right decisions by the work of the Holy Spirit, which allows you to do that. Now, if you were to go into the Old Testament, which is where we will go today, and in the future chapels that I will speak to you, I'm going to speak to you from the book of knowledge in the Old Testament. Do you know what book that is? The book of knowledge is actually the book of wisdom. So it is found in wisdom literature. And the wisdom literature and the primary book dealing with epignosis, New Testament Greek, and Old Testament wisdom, and bringing them together is the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is for those who would be wise. I love the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs has 30 different chapters. It's perfect for reading one chapter a day to get wisdom. And so you can take it for a month and just read one chapter a day. Oh, it talks about so many things. And it talks about good choices and bad choices. And in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is unfolded. It's what we call wisdom literature. Now, it was written by Solomon for the most part. There may have been some other writers as well, because their names are mentioned later on. It is divided into different sections of the book, but it is a book that in total deals with wisdom. Wisdom that takes knowledge and puts it in its proper place. And it takes life and life experiences and puts that in the proper place. I think you have come to Olivet University to pursue wisdom, not just knowledge.